My all-time favorite video magnifier just got a huge upgrade. Oh, ugh. And it is even bigger and better than before. And this is what we are talking about today. This is the Cloverbook XL. It is the successor to the very popular Cloverbook Pro, which if you saw my video was probably my all time favorite portable video magnifier. Before we take this big guy out of the box and check him out, a huge thank you to my friends over at Irie AT for sending this unit out for this review. Irie AT sells many of our favorite assistive technology devices and they are a national distributor for the Cloverbook line. So if you are interested in either the Cloverbook Pro or the brand new Cloverbook XL, reach out to Irie AT and they'll be able to help out with a device or at the very least help you find a distributor in your area. All right, first let's see what comes in the box. Then we'll take a look at the device itself and check out the features. Then at the end, I will give you my final thoughts on the Cloverbook Pro XL. But seeing as how it's just the big brother to the Cloverbook Pro and brings in some extra really cool features, I'll go ahead and tell you from the beginning that I think this is a pretty awesome device. All right, in the box, you'll see the Cloverbook Pro XL, which comes in a nice zippered hard case. The case has a handle as well as some D-rings on the sides for attaching a shoulder strap. Also in the box, you will get the extra screen that also comes in a padded zipper case. And then finally, you have some connecting cables and charging cables. And here is the Cloverbook Pro XL in all of its giant glory. As far as hardware and form factor, it's basically the same as the Cloverbook Pro, just bigger. But they did add a couple enhancements we will talk about right here at the beginning. Just like before, to open this up here, you put your finger on the base here and lift up on the handle, then the screen swings out and that is about it. Super simple, super easy. One thing I love about this, which I loved about the Cloverbook Pro is how firm it is. It's got just enough resistance to hold its shape nice and secure. The thing is not going to drop on you at all, but it's still easy enough to raise it up and move it around and put it in whatever shape you need it. So you might be thinking, what did they change? It looks exactly the same as the Cloverbook Pro. Well, other than being much larger, the Cloverbook Pro was a 12 inch screen and now we have a 16 inch screen. They've improved one very important thing. It also has to do with the screen. And here it is, ta-da! The screen raises up. So now you don't have to try and look down onto the screen. You can raise the screen up and it's right here in front of you. This is fantastic. This makes it so much easier to see the complete image on the screen. Now talking about the pro part of the Cloverbook Pro XL, this is where we bring in our extra screen. And this too is a 16 inch screen. It works exactly the same as the previous model. All right, slides right into, nests right into the back here. And now we have a dual screen setup, and this is awesome. We're gonna take a look at this here in a second, but you can have more screen real estate. You can put one camera on the bottom, one camera on the top. We can even do this really cool extended screen view where the two screens act like one giant screen. We're gonna take a look at that as well. First, let's talk about the ports on the sides of the Cloverbook Pro XL. You know what, let's just call it the XL from here on out, just so I don't have to say it all. <laughs> on the left side of the XL though, we have an in and an out HDMI port. This is where you connect it to, uh, say a much larger television or an external monitor. This is also how you connect the second screen to the main unit here. You have an SD card slot for storing images and things like that. And then on the right side, you have a headphone jack, which is pretty awesome. This does do OCR text to speech. And so if you wanted to listen to that discreetly, you can plug in a set of headphones. 
buttons on the sides, buttons and knobs and joysticks on the front here. We'll talk about all of those when we go over the different software features of the XL. And then finally on the side here, you have the power port for connecting the charging cable as well as the power button right above it. Okay, we've taken a look at the hardware. Now let's check out some of the features of the XL. First, we're gonna long press the power button here on the left side to turn it on. Light comes on, we get our splash screen. And here is our image. And remember that we can angle this up and then tilt our screen forward to get a good look at our image. Today we're looking at an article about myself that was featured in USA Today. All right, first things first, of course, any portable video magnifier needs to be able to magnify an image. And we have two ways to do that here on the Cloverbook Pro XL. You do have a touch screen, so you can pinch to zoom. You can also move this touch screen around, but we also have a dial on here that allows us to zoom in. And we get audio cues when we've reached our maximum and minimum zoom. Zoom out a little bit. We also have a joystick here in the middle that allows us to move around our image. And it is very responsive. While I'm magnified in, if I want to quickly jump to a new area, of course, I can move the joystick to find new areas, but there's a much easier way. If I just tap the button on the magnifying dial, locate on, zooms out, gives me a little crosshairs with a box, and this box represents where I'm magnified, the magnified area. Now, if I take my finger and I drag that box to a new spot, say over the picture here, and then tap that button again, locate off, jumps me right to that area. Of course, we can change our colors. We have color filters, all the standard color filters that we're pretty well used to. Once you find the filter that you like, you can press the button here on the color filter dial to go back to full color. Pressing it again goes back to your previously chosen color filter. We have a wide variety of colors to choose from. If you want to customize these, press and hold that button. Customized color combination. And we get into our custom color menu. Here we have all the color filters that we have available and we can choose which ones show up in the list. You can tap the color filter to cross it out. That way it won't show up in the list. When you're all done, tap the button up here in the upper Finish. left corner and we go back to live view. If we need to adjust the contrast, we can hold down the color button and rotate your zoom, your magnifying dial. Contrast adjust. And you can raise or lower contrast. You can use the dial here to adjust it. You can also just drag with your finger on the screen. The lower button on the left side is our lines and blinds. Line mask on. Tapping that will rotate through our horizontal lines, vertical line, and then our masks or the blinds. If you hold down the lines and blinds button and then use the joystick, you can adjust the blinds and the lines. You can move it wherever you need it to, or you can make it larger or smaller. And this works for the lines as well. I can set this line where I want to on the screen or I can make it thicker or thinner. If I hold that button down and adjust the color filter, I can change the color of the line here. So depending on your color filter, you might be able to find a more contrast color for your line. We have a home button here. If I tap that, it brings up our menu. And this menu might be different depending on what area we're in. Here we have controls of these lights down here. So I can turn all lights off. Turn all the lights off. Or I can turn them on individually. Left light on. Left one's on. All lights on. Now they're both on. I can also adjust the brightness of the screen. I can darken it or brighten the screen here. I can press the lower button on the right side here to take a freeze frame. Freeze image. Now the image is frozen. Of course, I can zoom in. I can pan around with my finger or the joystick. 
I can change my colors, all of that works like normal. If I'm in live view and I long press the freeze frame button, it will save an image. Image saved. And I also get an option to record a message with this picture. This is just a test to show how the recording works. I don't know, something like that. Now I can play the recording. This is just a test to show how the recording works. I don't know, something like that. And there you go. Now this does have OCR. I can tap the button here on the far right. Text to speech check. And I can either uh, choose to do OCR or I can cancel the operation. Current page text to speech. And we get a little progress. The blind life written by Dustin Brennan. I can tap the home button to bring up my controls, and I have a play button here. The blind life written by Dustin Brennan. One day, I was inspired. I was inspired to search on YouTube for information. You can speed up the reading, slow it down. You can fast forward, rewind to new sections change some different options of how it reads, or we can take what it is now, which is picture mode, and turn it into text mode. Text mode. So this essentially gathers all that text and puts it into a digital format. Here I can zoom in, make the text larger. Of course, we can change our colors. We can use the joystick to move the text around. I can pinch to zoom just like before. Now you have your on-screen controls here, but you can also just press the text-to-speech button here to play and pause the speech. It wasn't anything CB said. Now, of course, we have the distance camera here on the far right. And in order to switch to that, you tap the uppermost button on the left side of the device. Distance view. And now we are set to distance view. There's not much to look at here. <laughs> so we'll turn it towards me. Mirror view. There I am. Now, of course, all the same rules apply. I can pinch to zoom, I can change my colors, all of that. But say I want to also look at my document down here at the same time. For example, say I'm doing a worksheet here, I'm in class, and I need to be able to see the teacher writing up on the board while I fill out my paperwork. Well, tap that same button again on the left side. Horizontal split screen. And now we have split screen here where the lower half of the screen, I can see my document down below. The upper half is the distance camera. And I can interact with each of these. I just tap on the area first and then I can zoom in on that spot. Tap on the bottom here, I can zoom in and interact with that to change my colors. Now, since this screen is laid out in landscape, it might be a little bit better to do a vertical split screen. Yeah, no problem. Press that same button. Vertical split screen. And now we have our document on the left side, our distance camera on the right. Pressing the button one more time, we go back to just the document camera. External screen connected. All right, I've plugged in the external screen so you guys can see what this is all about. And right away you see that we have the image is being mirrored on the two screens. So if I zoom in, the same image is on both screens. And I know this one's a little difficult for you guys to see, but I'll do like this here. If we wanna change the images on the screens here, we press that same button on the left side. Distance view. Split screen. Now we have split screen. It has the distance viewing camera on the upper screen and the document camera down here on the bottom. Split screen. And then split screen the other way. Same thing. Now this is technically called screen copy because the image is being copied on both screens but we can also do a screen extend, which is really cool. So we tap our menu button here, and now we have the option to extend the screen. Screen extend. And now it looks like it's disappeared from that, but it actually hasn't. Get rid of our menu here. 
because if I enlarge this image, you see it pops up here. And now let's turn it over here. It'll be better with our picture. So now my picture is on two screens. This is really cool. We can get a lot of information on these two screens at once. And of course, everything works just like normal. Now we'll go back to our text here. There's another really cool feature that we can utilize with these two screens. If I tap the menu again and tap our icon here in the middle, screen enlarge. Now we have screen enlarge. So we have a box on the bottom here and whatever is in the box is being magnified up on the top. And if I zoom in, the box gets smaller indicating we're seeing a larger section here or seeing this smaller section enlarged. And now if I put my finger in the box here, I can drag it around and you see it's moving in real time on the upper one. So maybe I want to read this headline here. I can just drag it along and read on the upper one. Really, really cool. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that because we have a much larger device now, we can scan a much larger surface down here below. So if I press and hold our text to speech button here, tabloid full page mode, we go into tabloid mode and you can see from this image here that if I wanted to now, I could open up this entire page here and OCR this entire page two page spread of like a magazine or a tabloid. This is the largest scanning area for an OCR device that I have ever seen. Other than something that has an individual arm that you can lift up and get more space with a device like this, this is the largest scanning space I've ever seen. Now that we are done, we can long press the power button and hit the power button there to turn it off. External remove our external screen, tuck our camera, tuck the screen down, lower this section down, grab our handle, and we're ready to go. All right, guys, so this was the Cloverbook Pro XL, the big brother to the Cloverbook Pro, one of my top picks for portable video magnifiers. In all honesty, probably my favorite portable video magnifier. As you see in this video, this just takes it to the next level. All of the things I love from the Cloverbook Pro with some new features like the tilt-out screen, the larger screen, and some of the cool new integrations for the secondary screen. If you would like any more information about the Cloverbook Pro XL or any of the other versions of the Cloverbook XL, then check out the links in the video description down below. Head over to Irie AT. They will be able to help you out with this product or at the very least point you in the right direction to a distributor in your area. But I think this is officially my new favorite portable video magnifier. If you don't mind the extra weight, it is heavier obviously because it's larger, but I think the benefits of being bigger, the larger screen definitely make up for the little bit of extra weight. And when it's all folded up in its carrying case, it's not bad, especially if you utilize a shoulder strap. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, if you like this kind of content, help me out, hit the like button. I have the goal to hit 100,000 subscribers and with your help, we can definitely make that a reality. So click subscribe, turn on notifications. It's 100% free. It doesn't cost you anything and it just helps me in my journey. And don't forget to check out all my other social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and also the podcast. The Blind Life Podcast is available on all your major podcast platforms. A huge thank you once again to Irie AT. A huge thank you to you guys for watching. This is Sam with The Blind Life. I will see you next time. <laughs>